Tanam and Fo Angip Shuyan have been married for three years. Three years is neither long nor short, but it's enough time for Tanam to experience all kinds of emotional wounds. Tanam used to believe that her heart was cold due to Fo Angip Shuyan's indifference, but regardless of how much time has passed, those three years have still been a source of warmth for her. However, every time she looks at her husband's WeChat filled with transaction numbers, Tanam still can't suppress the pain in her chest. She stares blankly at the numbers on the screen, over the course of their three-year marriage, whenever Fo Angip Shuyan reached out to her, it was always to ask her to come to the hospital to donate blood. More accurately, he compelled her to sell her blood to Kyo Yuyanu. But that wasn't all. Tanam couldn't recall how many times she had received intimate photos of her husband and Kyo Yuyanu, sent by Kyo Yuyanu herself, today was no different. Kyo Yuyanu sent a photo of Fo Angip Shuyan sleeping next to her, along with mocking messages to Tanam. Reading these messages, Tanam couldn't help but tremble uncontrollably. Her marriage to Fo Angip Shuyan, her one sided affection for him all became a joke. A conventional wife like her being scolded by the mistress as the third party was just ludicrous, Tanam finally couldn't bear to continue enduring this marriage any longer. She decided to send a message to Fo Angip Shuyan, saying, Fo Angip Shuyan, let's get divorced. Tanam thought everything would end the moment she uttered the word divorce, but she was mistaken. After divorcing Fo Angip Shuyan, Tanam returned to her family's home. Seeing her beloved daughter distressed, Father to spoke up to comfort her, saying, Why cry? Isn't it just a divorce? The Ta family can surely take care of you, right? He approached and embraced his daughter saying, Nom nom, as I've said from the beginning, it was a three-year deadline. If he doesn't love you, then you come back to inherit the company. Now, you should keep your promise. Oh, how I wish I had a father like this, then, divorcing ten husbands wouldn't be a problem at all. From then on, Tanam embarked on a new life with immense wealth. It marked the beginning of a period of revenge, turning the tables on Fo Angip Shuyan and humiliating him thoroughly. Of course, Tanam wouldn't let Kyo Yuyan Nu, the green tea mistress, off the hook either. Tanam lived a new life with a fortune, leaving Fo Angip Shuyan to rue his decisions. Many years later, when Tanam had become the most successful woman in City B, a reporter asked her, why did your three-year marriage with Fo Angip Shuyan come to an end? Tanam calmly smiled and replied. Tanam smirked at the reporter and said, Because I had to return home to inherit billions, become the richest, and moreover, I've never eaten humble pie. As for the real reason why the three-year marriage between Tanam and Fo Angip Shuyan ended, it must be mentioned the text message Tanam received one late night. Displayed on the screen was a message from Fo Angip Shuyan, urging her to come to the hospital quickly to donate blood, Tanam, suffering from a severe cold, hastily sat up upon receiving the message from Fo Angip Shuyan, causing herself to cough incessantly. Along with the message, Fo Angip Shuyan promptly transferred 500,000 renminbi to Tanam's account. Tanam looked at the increasing numbers in her account without feeling any joy in her heart. She sat there, staring blankly at her phone, ignoring the constant coughing fits racking her body. Tanam slowly scrolled through the conversation between her and Fo Angip Shuyan. In a typical marital exchange, couples would exchange sweet words of affection. But with Fo Angip Shuyan, it was all about transferring money to her account, accompanied by brief messages urging her to donate blood at the hospital. The more she read, the lighter her heart felt. Yet, with each beat her heart ached even more, she and Fo Angip Shuyan had been married for three years. During these three years, every time Fo Angip Shuyan reached out to her, it was always to ask her to come to the hospital to donate blood. Or more accurately to sell blood to Kyo Yuyan Nu. As for Tanam the legal wife on paper, Fo Angip Shuyan always treated her like a stranger. Just in this month alone, Tanam had donated blood to Kyo Yuyan Nu three times. Originally, three times had already exceeded Tanam's endurance limit, yet yesterday, because Tanam was waiting for Fo Angip Shuyan to finish work, she stood in the rain for over an hour at the company's entrance. Enduring three blood donations in one month combined with standing in the rain took a toll on Tanam's health. Today, she felt dizzy and unable to go to work, 
Fo Engip Shuyan probably didn't know she had a fever, which is why she could suggest continuing blood donation as she did now. What made to Nam even more painful was the photo that Kyo Yuyan Nu had taken and sent to her, Fo Engip Shuyan sleeping next to Kyo Yuyan Nu, who was in a state of undress. Kyo Yuyan Nu continuously sent mocking messages to Tanam, saying, Even if you are Mrs. Fo, it's just a title. You should feel ashamed to occupy this position for three years. Fo Engip Shuyan has never looked at you more than once. He rested at my place yesterday. If I were you, I would have found a rope to hang myself. You are the third person, every word felt like a dagger piercing into Tanam's heart, already scarred from past wounds. She trembled as she stared fixedly at each line of text on her phone. Before Tanam could even gather her thoughts amidst the pain, another form of pressure descended upon her. Her phone rang, displaying a call from her mother-in-law. As Tanam answered, the other end erupted into a torrent of harsh scolding from Fo Engip Shuyan's mother. She loudly demanded, Do you know what day it is today? The maid has asked for leave. Hurry over here and cook dinner. Before Tanam could even greet her, her mother-in-law abruptly ended the call, Tanam stood numbly, letting go of the phone. Never before had she felt such helplessness and despair. The more she thought, the more pain she felt. Tanam had forsaken her family and friends to endure a three-year marriage with Fo Engip Shuyan. Regardless of how the Fo family viewed her, even treating her like a maid at times, Tanam always endured for the sake of Fo Engip Shuyan. This wasn't the first time Kyo Yuyan Nu had taunted Tanam, but that blurry photo had profoundly trampled on Tanam's last remaining shreds of dignity, everything, from Fo Engip Shuyan to Kyo Yuyan Nu, and even the Fo family, had turned Tanam's marriage into a mockery. Tanam choked back tears. Finally, Tanam had been pushed to the brink of despair. She decided to reply to Fo Engip Shuyan's message, but it wasn't a compliant message about going to the hospital to donate blood. Instead, it was, let's get a divorce. After sending the message, Fo Engip Shuyan immediately called to Nam, something he had never done before. To Nam gently wiped away her tears and answered the phone, her heart pounding. She had just managed to say hello when Fo Engip Shuyan hurriedly poured out a torrent of words, asking, To Nam, what are you doing? How much money do you want? The doctor said Kyo Yuyan Nu is in serious danger. Fo Engip Shuyan's words sent a chill through to Nam's still tender heart. She responded firmly, We'll meet in court in an hour. Otherwise, tell her to wait and die. Without waiting for Fo Engip Shuyan's reply, to Nam coldly hung up the phone, Fo Engip Shuyan still hadn't grasped the seriousness of the situation. Continuing to transfer money to Tanam. This time, it amounted to 1 million renminbi. Seeing the balance in her account skyrocketing rapidly to Nam couldn't muster a smile, instead she laughed bitterly for two hours in agony, one hour later, to Nam and Fo Engip Shuyan finally met at the Civil Affairs Bureau, where marriages are registered and dissolved. While waiting for the procedures to be completed, Fo Engip Shuyan couldn't help but furrow his brow and ask to Nam, what exactly are you not satisfied with? I know you've donated blood again this month, but I've compensated you for that. Tanam didn't want to hear any more of this. She coldly replied, let's get divorced. Fo Engip Shuyan coldly retorted to Tanam, do you really think only you can donate blood? Tanam, don't you dare regret this. Tanam paid no heed to Fo Engip Shuyan's words, the civil servant handed two red documents to Tanam and Fo Engip Shuyan saying, both of you please take the divorce certificates. Tanam immediately took the divorce certificate and stood up abruptly, not wanting to see Fo Engip Shuyan's face any longer, but before ending this three-year marriage, Tanam still had to say to Fo Engip Shuyan, what I regret the most is marrying you three years ago. Immediately after receiving the divorce papers, Fo Engip Shuyan also stood up, brushing off all of Tanam's words. He coldly told Tanam, come with me to the hospital, to donate blood for Kyo Yuyan Nu, as you promised. Furious, Tanam responded to Fo Engip Shuyan, even if Kyo Yuyan Nu dies in front of me, I will not waste another drop of blood for her. Fo Engip Shuyan, angered by this, rebuked Tanam, even with Kyo Yuyan Nu being sick like that, you still curse her? 
Don't forget the condition you set when you married me, which was to donate blood any time. Listening to those words, Tanam's body continued to tremble. She should have realized early on that she was nothing more than a mobile blood bank for Kyo Yuya Nu. However, Tanam didn't show any sign of pain outwardly. She coldly told Fo Angip Shuyan, I can't bear this role of Fo's mistress anymore. Rest assured, this is the last time I'll donate blood and it's also the end. With that, Tanam quickly left the civil affairs office, Fo Angip Shuyan watched Tanam leave with a somber expression, feeling a bit conflicted inside. However he thought that if Tanam couldn't survive without money, she would eventually come back to him for help, no matter what. Within moments, both of them arrived at the city's central hospital. Inside the hospital room, a nurse was checking Kyo Yuya Nu's health condition asking her, How do you feel today? Is the wound still painful? Kyo Yuya Nu smiled and replied, I'm feeling much better now. As soon as she finished speaking, the door was forcefully pushed open by Tanam. Seeing Tanam arrive, Kyo Yuya Nu quickly changed her facial expression. With a weak and helpless demeanor she said, Tanam, you've finally come. Are you angry with me? My health is not good, yet I keep bothering you. I'm worried that your body can't handle it. Inside Tanam sneered, such fake acting skills. She could win an Oscar with these performances. Tanam coldly asked Kyo Yuyan Nu, did you send the text messages and the photo? With a face of innocent green tea, Kyo Yuyan Nu pretended to be clueless and pitifully said, What messages? I don't know. Before she could finish her sentence, Tanam swung her hand, delivering a slap straight to the deceitful and repulsive face of Kyo Yuyan Nu, the sound echoing through the hospital room. Furious, Kyo Yuyan Nu glared at Tanam, incredulous that Tanam would dare to strike her right in front of Fo Angip Shuyan. Her ex husband, Fo Angip Shuyan, feeling sympathetic towards the pitiful green tea girl, rushed to shield Kyo Yuyan Nu. Angered he shouted at Tanam, What do you think you're doing? Seeing this, Kyo Yuyan Nu continued her tearful act, clinging to Fo Angip Shuyan's hand saying, I didn't do anything Angip Shuyan, she misunderstood me. In a scene that could be mistaken for a comedy if one weren't part of it, Tanam chuckled coldly and told Kyo Yuyan Nu, You don't need to act anymore. I know it was you who sent them. Immediately after, Tanam threw a handful of photos at Fo Angip Shuyan. Fo Angip Shuyan picked up one of the photos, clearly the one showing the bed scene lacking fabric that Kyo Yuyan Nu had sent to Tanam the day before. Tanam shrugged indifferently and replied to Fo Angip Shuyan, Does it matter how I got them? The important thing is what's in the photos, isn't it? Kyo Yuyan Nu, standing nearby, visibly startled, her expression betraying her fear. Upon careful consideration, Fo Angip Shuyan pondered the situation and came to a conclusion. He reasoned that yesterday, when he visited Kyo Yuyan Nu at the hospital, he must have momentarily closed his eyes due to fatigue, and someone else took the opportunity to snap the photos. However, no matter how much he thought about it, Fo Angip Shuyan couldn't fathom that Kyo Yuyan Nu would be the one behind the camera. Tanam crossed her arms, speaking coldly to Kyo Yuyan Nu, those who destroy other people's families like you are indeed the real third parties. Now you must be satisfied. I wish you success in becoming Mrs. Fo. Hearing this, Fo Angip Shuyan silently glanced at Kyo Yuyan Nu lying on the hospital bed. Kyo Yuyan Nu panicked and tried to explain saying, Angip Shuyan, Tanam misunderstood me. I really didn't do anything. I didn't take those photos, she must have arranged them to frame me. She grabbed Fo Angip Shuyan's shirt weakly asking, Angip Shuyan, did Tanam donating blood to me affect our relationship? I truly don't know about the photos. I can swear on Tren Hang's name, he was your loyal friend, entrusted me to you before he passed away. Upon hearing the name Tren Hang, Fo Angip Shuyan furrowed his brow slightly, lowering his voice as he spoke to Kyo Yuyan Nu, Tanam was overly agitated just now. She shouldn't have resorted to violence. Do you need the doctor to check on you? Kyo Yuyan Nu. Nursing the cheek where Tanam had slapped her, pretended to be pitiful saying, I'm fine, thank you. Fo Angip Shuyan glanced at Tanam asking her, Is it because of this incident that you want a divorce? Fo Angip Shuyan's words made Tanam unable to suppress a smirk. 
Before she could respond, Fo Angip Shuyan assumed he was right and said, Leave, donate blood first. In Fo Angip Shuyan's mind, Kyo Yuyan Nu's health was now the most important thing, and the matter of the photograph could be explained to Tanan later. This attitude of Fo Angip Shuyan also made Kyo Yuyan Nu feel confident and happy, but she couldn't help but feel disdainful as she looked at Tanam, thinking, Fo Angip Shuyan still chooses me. Tanam loses again, however, Kyo Yuyan Nu did not expect that suddenly Tanam turned to ask the doctors in the room. Are you sure she needs a blood transfusion? The doctor stuttered, looking at Kyo Yuyan Nu on the hospital bed. Kyo Yuyan Nu's face turned pale and she hurriedly signaled to the doctor. The doctor immediately nodded repeatedly, saying, yes, yes. Miss Kyo just had a fall, her leg suffered severe blood loss, and she needs an urgent blood transfusion. Hearing this, Fo Angip Shuyan told them, what are you waiting for? Quickly start the blood transfusion. Seeing the situation being handled smoothly, as if it were a sunsilk commercial, Kyo Yuyan Nu smirked in satisfaction. Unexpectedly, the doctor, who seemed to lack conscience, had just begun to prepare to leave to start the blood transfusion procedure when Tanam, with a cold demeanor commanded, stop. The entire group immediately turned to look at Tanam. In the face of their icy gazes, Tanam forcefully pulled the blanket, covering Kyo Yuyanu off. Then, she rushed forward, intending to tear off the bandage around Kyo Yuyanu's leg. Kyo Yuyan Nu never imagined that Tanam would go to such lengths. She hastily exclaimed, Tanam, what are you trying to do? However, Kyo Yuyan Nu was still a step behind. Tanam had already ripped off the bandage on her knee. The wound, which was supposed to be severe enough to require an urgent blood transfusion, according to Kyo Yuyan Nu and the doctor, was now clearly just a minor scratch. Tanam sneered provocatively, saying, is the injury so severe like that? Not a drop of blood is even flowing. If I had arrived a bit later, I doubt it would have healed. Kyo Yuya Nu was seething with anger, but she didn't have time to confront Tanam. She quickly turned to appear pitiful, explaining to Fo Angip Shuyan, Angip Shuyan, it's not like that. My body is weak, and a blood transfusion will help me recover faster. Tanam found it increasingly amusing and with a smirk he remarked, getting injured every month or two, you truly are quite delicate Kyo Yuyan Nu. Having no desire to watch any more episodes of this comedic drama, and to protect his eyes from further irritation, Tanam decided to leave the hospital room. Before departing, he left Kyo Yuyan Nu with a final piece of advice, in the future, ask Fo Angip Shuyan to find someone else to be your mobile blood bank. With that, Tanam left Kyo Yuyan Nu's hospital room, his demeanor cold and indifferent, however, contrary to his earlier confident demeanor, Tanam now slumped despairingly onto a bench in the hospital corridor. A sense of overwhelming frustration engulfed him like never before, and tears streamed down his face. At that moment, Tanam's phone buzzed. Answering the call, she found it was her older brother on the line. Before Tanam could utter a word, her brother spoke gently, Where are you? I'm coming to pick you up, 15 minutes passed, and Tanam, exhausted from the day's events and her own physical strain, drifted off to sleep on the bench. Her older brother arrived to pick her up, as promised. Gently, he lifted his little sister from the bench and out of the hospital. Accompanying Tanam's older brother were a team of well-trained bodyguards, a clear indication of his prominent status. At the same time, Fo Angip Shuyan was busy interrogating the doctor, treating Kyo Yuyan Nu. He asked, Is the leg injury severe? Is it so serious that it requires a blood transfusion? Is this the level of expertise of your hospital? The doctor, trembling, replied, This is Ms. Kyo's request. She said you had agreed, and besides, you've always been here for blood donation, so. Seeing Fo Angip Shuyan's furious expression, the doctor hastily added, Mr. Fo, we dare not any more. Fo Angip Shuyan recalled the pitiful and fragile appearance of Kyo Yuyan Nu, wondering if he had been overly indulgent towards her, and he rarely felt remorseful towards Tanam at this moment. He silently pondered that perhaps Tanam insisted on divorce because of a misunderstanding about his relationship with Kyo Yuyan Nu. Fo Angip Shuyan quickly took out his phone, 
thinking that if he could explain clearly, there might be no need for divorce anymore. He only needed to maintain a distance from Kyo Yuyan Nu, and nothing would happen. However, no matter how many times Fo Angip Shuyan called, Tanam didn't pick up. The automated message kept repeating, the number you have called is currently unavailable. Fo Angip Shuyan furrowed his brows and instructed the security team to find Tanam. Very soon, ten minutes later the security team returned to report to Fo Angip Shuyan. Both of them nervously reported, Boss Fo, we couldn't find Miss Tu. The cameras were hacked, and we couldn't trace where Miss Tu went. Fo Angip Shuyan now truly worried thought to himself, Tanam doesn't have a penny on her. Where could she possibly go after the divorce? Angered, he bit his lip, then ordered the guards, increase the number of people searching for Tanam, and if found immediately inform me. While Fo Angip Shuyan was anxiously organizing the search for Tanam, at the Ta family's mansion, Tanam had just woken up from a deep sleep. Sitting up, she found herself in her familiar cozy room, surrounded by warmth and comfort. Seeing the familiar surroundings, Tanam's eyes welled up with tears. In the end, she had returned to the Ta family's home, unexpectedly, Tanam's state of distress was noticed by her father Mr. Two. He crossed his arms and coldly rebuked Tanam, what's with the tears? Isn't it just a divorce? Can't our Ta family still support you? Seeing her father, Tanam immediately rushed into his arms, releasing all the anguish and frustration she had endured at the Fo family's home, Mr. Tu also known as Tadaik Fong, was the manager of the Tu family business. He affectionately stroked Tanam's head silently musing, this foolish child, never once endured any hardship from childhood to adulthood, yet only for Fo Angip Shuyan did she forsake her status as the heir to our family's fortune. Even at home, she's treated with disdain by him. Mr. Tu spoke up to counsel Tanam. Mr. Tu said, Nom Nom, we've discussed this before. The agreement was for three years. If Fo Angip Shuyan doesn't love you, then you return to inherit the company. Now, you should stick to your promise. Tanam wiped away her tears and spoke with determination to her father, Don't worry, Dad. I won't be foolish anymore. Hearing this from his daughter, Mr. Tu happily replied, Good. I'll have your older brother accompany you to get acquainted with the company first. Then, we'll choose an auspicious day to celebrate and announce your status. Outside, Tandu couldn't contain her excitement any longer and rushed over to hug Tanam tightly, joyfully exclaiming, Congratulations on your divorce. Darling. Tandu, Tanam's closest friend poured out all her frustrations on behalf of her friend saying, That foolish Fo Angip Shuyan thinks he's got something precious. There will come a time when he'll regret it. Tanam, touched by her friend's support, smiled gratefully and replied, To do, thank you. The two girls had been close for a long time. Tanam held Tandu's hand and said, I still have some documents at the foe's house that I need to retrieve. Tandu didn't hesitate to respond, I'll go with you. Tanam and Tandu quickly arrived at the foe family's mansion. Upon entering, they unfortunately encountered a roadblock in the form of Kuk Tin, Fo Angip Shuyan's mother and Tanam's mother-in-law. Seeing Tanam accompanied by Tan Du, she spoke sternly, How many times have I told you? The Fo family has many confidential documents. You can't just bring people into the house, casually. Don't you remember, Tan Du couldn't tolerate it any longer and retorted angrily to Tanam's mother-in-law, saying, Who's being casual here? At your age, you're still behaving like a scolding dog? Kuk Tin smirked and said, wearing fake brand clothes, yet pretending to be part of high society. Lower class people dreaming of marrying into aristocracy like you. My dear, I've seen plenty of them, Tanam couldn't hold back any longer and angrily intervened saying, this is my friend, please respect her. Kuk Tin was taken aback that her usually timid child dared to challenge her. She slammed the teacup onto the table, stood up abruptly, and scolded Tanam sharply, saying, For the past three years, enjoying the luxuries at the Fo family, you forgot your humble origins didn't you? Then, she turned to scold Tandu saying, And you, where did you come from? Don't know what's right or wrong, let's see if I can teach you a lesson today. Kuk Tin was about to raise her hand to slap Tandu. 
Then, Tandu rushed forward and pushed Kuk Tin aside angrily shouting, only to Nam bends over backward for you, not me. Tandu pointed straight at Kuk Tin's grim, pale face and continued, the Fo family is nothing but nouveau riche with a bit of money. If it weren't for Tanam, I wouldn't even bother looking at you people. I even complained about the Faux family's floors dirtying my shoes. Feeling insulted, Kuk Tin gritted her teeth and glared at Tanam shouting, Tanam, do you believe I'll kick her out? Tanam paused and then turned to glance at Kuk Tin, replying, you don't need to kick her out. Once I gather my belongings, I'll leave. Kuk Tin paid no attention to Tanam's response. She silently thought that she had been too foolish in the past, giving up her dignity for a man like Fo Angip Shuyan. She vowed that she wouldn't have to tolerate such humiliation from them anymore, seeing Tanam's indifferent demeanor, Kuk Tin felt a burning hatred. She glared at Tanam and then turned to look at Tandu finally, Tanam gathered the necessary documents. Just as she and Tandu were about to leave the Fo family's house, Kuk Tin adopted a condescending tone with Tanam, saying, I'll tell Angip Shuyan about today's events. Don't even dream of being forgiven. Even if you beg on your knees, I'll still kick you out. Tanam's response was met with amusement. She turned back, smirked, and said to her former mother-in-law, I forgot to mention something to you. Fo Angip Shuyan and I are divorced. Even if you beg me on your knees, I won't set foot in this house again. Until late in the evening, when Fo Angip Shuyan returned home, Kuk Tin approached and asked, Angip Shuyan, have you and Tanam divorced? Fo Angip Shuyan frowned and questioned, how do you know? Have you met her? Kuk Tin smirked and muttered, it's for the best. Someone like Tanam was never worthy of our family name. A wild chicken trying to become a phoenix. I've always found her irritating. The farther away she goes, the better. Before Kuk Tin could finish, Fo Angip Shuyan interrupted, Where is she now? Kuk Tin sneered and replied, She was here earlier, but she's gone now. I need to check if she stole anything. You should also check your room, Kuk Tin suddenly remembered something and asked Fo Angip Shuyan, Since you two divorced, you didn't give her too much money, did you? Fo Angip Shuyan remained thoughtful, furrowing his brows, and replied, She didn't ask for a single penny from me. Kuk Tin sneered sarcastically and said, Well, consider her knowing her place. Fo Angip Shuyan's mother's provocative demeanor made him ponder deeply. He had always believed that Tanam and the person from the Fo family were living together very well, and he had never expected his mother to be dissatisfied with Tanam like this. Fo Angip Shuyan wondered silently if his mother had contributed in some way to Tanam's divorce. After Fo Angip Shuyan returned to the bedroom, he noticed that Tanam only took back all of his personal documents, but he did not take the bank card that he had given to her earlier. Right at this moment, Kuk Tin burst into Fo Angip Shuyan's room and angrily exclaimed, It's gone. I can't find the precious necklace in the safe anymore. That necklace is worth 10 million VND, it must have been stolen by Tanam. She grabbed her phone, ready to call the police. Fo Angip Shuyan intervened, saying, Mom, don't call the police. It may not have been Tanam who took it. Perhaps the necklace got lost somewhere. In Fo Angip Shuyan's heart, there was doubt, thinking, Tanam has never even tried to pry into the safe's passcode. How could he steal something? Moreover, it's been three years of marriage and I've never gifted Tanam any jewelry. Hearing her son's words, Kuk Tin sneered coldly, then smirked inwardly silently plotting, not calling the police is fine. After all, I have my own way to handle this. At the same time, Tanam and Tandu had returned to the Ta family mansion. Tandu was still furious about the morning's events, expressing her frustration, that woman, Fo Angip Shuyan's mother is truly despicable. If she wasn't elderly, I would really teach her how to behave. Tanam, beside her, gently advised, saying, let it go, Tudu do don't compare yourself to her. After all, we won't have to deal with her again in the future, Tan Du, who was chatting animatedly suddenly fell silent, then stopped altogether. Tanam looked ahead curiously to see what was happening. It turned out that Tan Du's older brother had returned home. It should be noted that Tan Du's older brother was a distinguished figure. Tan. 
Tukin rarely visited the Ta family mansion. Tanam quickly rushed into his brother's arms, happily saying, You're finally back, big brother. Why did you leave so quickly after dropping me off last time? Tukin said, I had an important meeting to attend, and as soon as it ended, I came straight back here. Tukin handed Tanam a gift, saying, This is a specially designed model, with limited quantities available and not yet released on the market. Tukin also didn't forget to give Tandu another gift, saying, I knew Tandu was here, so I also prepared something for you. Tandu blushed and shyly thanked Tukan, observing Tandu's blushing face filled with youthful charm. Tanam's mind immediately started racing. She thought to herself, Does Tandu like my older brother? Maybe there's something between them that should be explored. After giving the gifts to Ken said to Tanam, my second brother is in the foreign laboratory participating in a top-secret scientific research project. He won't be able to come back temporarily. And our third brother is currently filming abroad. He'll be back in a few days. You've been accompanying me to the company for the past few days. Tanam replied gently, I know, late into the night. While Tanam was sound asleep she was awakened by the ringing of her phone. She furrowed her brows and muttered, who could be calling at this hour? As she answered the phone, Tandu on the other end sounded anxious and rushed saying, the Faux family is really up to no good. Even after the divorce. They haven't stopped causing trouble for you. They're accusing you of stealing. They're demanding you return the items by tomorrow or they'll report it to the police. Hurry and check it out, it's spreading like wildfire on the internet, Tan Du's words jolted Tanam awake. She quickly went online to check. True enough, the hashtag former wife of the Faux family was trending at the top spot, Tanam sat up, silently marveling at the sophistication of the Faux family schemes. The Faux T Corporation even posted a clarification, stating, Ms. Tanam, the former wife of Mr. Faux Angip Shuyan, CEO of Faux T Corporation proposed divorce and the two parted ways amicably after signing a divorce agreement. However, yesterday Ms. Tanam without permission, intruded into the Faux family's house and stole the precious dreamy necklace valued at 10 million TET. Faux T Corporation hereby clarifies that we hope Ms. Tanam will return the dreamy necklace tomorrow. If not, Faux T Corporation will report to the police to pursue Ms. Tanam's legal responsibility. Upon reading all this, Tandu exploded in anger shouting, What kind of nonsense is this? Stealing something worth 10 million TT and flaunting it? Acting like no one has ever seen money before? Tanam casually scrolled through the comments below, where everyone seemed to side with the Faux family saying, Report to the police, not only a prostitute but also a thief. Some even took screenshots of Tanam's posts on Weibo to mock her. Tanam carefully recalled the dream necklace. She had only seen it once. Fo Angip Shuyan always kept it locked in the safe, and she didn't know the password, nor had she ever asked him. Tanam spoke coldly to Tandu over the phone saying, Tu do, if they didn't spare any mercy, then I won't hold back either. Tandu replied, Tanam, you must definitely set them straight. Tanam then called her eldest brother. Once the call was connected, Tanam immediately asked, Big brother, I remember my name being on the entertainment company. Who is managing it now? To Kim replied, It's managed by Dunam, I'll immediately ask him to handle the online matter. However, Tanam intervened saying, No need for that, I can handle this myself. On the morning of the next day, Tanam took matters into her own hands and posted a shocking announcement on Weibo warning Fo Angip Shuyan. Tanam explicitly stated in the announcement, I am deeply saddened by the theft of the dreamy necklace, so I immediately invited private detectives to investigate last night. It turns out the item is in the hands of Miss Fo, Fo Don Don who is currently in Country J on the shores of the Atlantic Ocean. Miss Fo has spent a lot of money at the casino hoping everyone sees it clearly, along with the announcement was an image of Fo Don Don indulging herself in the casino, with the dreamy necklace placed nearby as her gambling token. Additionally, there was an intimate photo of Kyo Yuyan Nu and Fo Angip Shuyan, which Kyo Yuyan Nu had previously sent to Tanam. The Fo family didn't spare any punches in accusing Tanam, so she didn't feel the need to be lenient with them either. 
Immediately after Tanam posted her rebuttal, public opinion swiftly turned against the faux group, with everyone laughing at their misfortune. Additionally, Fo Eng Gip Shuyan's affair with Kyo Yuya Nu was also brought to light. The reasons for Tanam's divorce gradually became a topic of heated discussion among netizens. Tanam felt exhausted as she let go of her phone. She silently thought to herself that she must have been blind to marry someone like Fo Eng Gip Shuyan. At the same time, the Fo T conglomerate was in turmoil due to the scandal involving the Fo family and Tanam. Fo Eng Gip Shuyan infuriated asked his personal secretary, who allowed the company account to be used to accuse Tanam of theft. The secretary bowed 90 degrees and replied, it was instructed by the madam herself last night. She said she had informed you. Fo Angip Shuyan became even more enraged stating, since when does the company's affairs become the decision of the madam? Remove it immediately. The secretary hesitated saying, Mr. Du, the head of Hoa Ung Entertainment said this news will stay up for 24 hours, and no one can take it down. Hoa Ung is the top company in the industry, and nobody dares to disrespect him, Fo Eng Gip Shuyan rubbed his temples, pondering silently how Tanam could display such courage. In that announcement, she even emphasized the line, warning to Mr. Fo. Did she believe that all of this was he doing? The phone on Fo Eng Gip Shuyan's desk kept ringing incessantly. It was a notification of an incoming call. Fo Angip Shuyan, feeling weary, picked up the phone. It was Fo Angip Shuyan's father on the line. He shouted through the phone, instructing Fo Angip Shuyan, immediately tell Tanam to take down the post online. Can't you see we're losing face? Upon hearing this Fo Angip Shuyan frowned uncomfortably. On the other end of the line, Fo Angip Shuyan's mother interjected sternly saying, Angip Shuyan, bring that troublemaker here. How dare he do such a thing? I must teach him a lesson, Fo Angip Shuyan responded angrily saying, how did Tanam do wrong? Clearly, Don Don took the Mimong necklace. Why is mom blaming Tanam? If she doesn't reveal any trace of the Mimong necklace, will this trouble be blamed on Tanam? Fo Angip Shuyan felt increasingly uneasy as he thought about it, punching the glass wall hard thinking to himself, Tanam's response lacked any emotion online. Could it be that she no longer has any trust in me? Fo Angip Shuyan's mother furious spoke over the phone saying, how do I know it's Don Don? Isn't the necklace always kept in the safe of the two? Besides Tanam, who else could have taken it? Fo Angip Shuyan, hearing these words, felt even more deflated. He coldly replied to his mother, apologies can still be made now. Hearing this, Mrs. Fo naturally became enraged shouting loudly, what? You want me to apologize to it? The one who should apologize is that penniless, lowly creature with a shady background. Despite that, it dared to put the Fo family at risk. Bring it here so I can deal with this scum. Mrs. Fo kept blaming Tanam with every sentence. Fo Angip Shuyan irritated said, we are divorced. Then he abruptly hung up the phone. He turned to his secretary and asked, have we found Tanam yet? The secretary visibly nervous replied, Mr. Fo, it seems that Miss Tu is not in City A. We couldn't find any trace of her. Fo Angip Shuyan ordered them to continue searching, waiting for the secretary to leave the room. Fo Angip Shuyan unlocked his phone and checked Tanam's Weibo. There, Tanam's posts were all related to him from beginning to end. There were posts like Fo is home early today, or it's raining outside, I wonder if Fo brought an umbrella. There was even a post about the breakfasts Tanam had prepared for him during their three years of marriage. Including the day Fo Angip Shuyan left, Fo Angip Shuyan's gaze softened as he realized that Tanam had always been posting memories of both of them on Weibo. Their three-year marriage was not empty, she had always been the one cherishing it. Despite that, he had never understood or participated in Tanam's happiness. Fo Angip Shuyan was about to browse more of Tanam's Weibo when suddenly the website lagged, spinning endlessly and unable to scroll down. Fo Angip Shuyan frowned, wondering why the network was lagging at this moment. However, when the screen returned to normal Tanam's Weibo showed, this Weibo does not exist. Fo Angip Shuyan was stunned, not expecting Tanam to delete so many posts like that, 
could she possibly consider these three years as if they had never happened? Thinking so, Fo Eng Gip Shuyan felt uneasy, gripping the phone tightly. He stared coldly out through the glass wall, firmly affirming to himself, even if I have to dig three feet of earth, I will find Tanam. The time quickly passed, and tonight at the Hoa Ni Don Hotel, a party was held for the upper class. The red carpet was laid out all the way to the main road. With a large gathering of reporters. Fo Eng Gip Shuyan of course also attended, bringing along Kyo Yuyan Nu to the event. Kyo Yuyan Nu presented herself as the female host while discreetly glancing at Fo Eng Gip Shuyan beside her. Kyo Yuyan Nu thought to herself that during this time, even if she were truly ill Fo Eng Gip Shuyan wouldn't bother to look at her. Luckily, Fo Eng Gip Shuyan finally got divorced. She finally had the chance she had been waiting for after all these years, seeing Fo Eng Gip Shuyan. The party organizer hurried over to greet him with a warm welcome. Just then a reporter announced, To Can from Taitan has arrived. The crowd immediately turned their attention to the couple stepping out of the luxurious car. Seeing Tanam waiting to escort a woman, the reporters buzzed with speculation saying, To Can has never been one for female company, but this time he brings a girlfriend along? Could she be capable of making To Can serve himself? I wonder who his girlfriend is. The person accompanying Taken is none other than Tanam, dressed impeccably in a perfect suit and exquisitely made up. As Tanam steps out of the car, the reporters swarm like hungry wolves continuously snapping photos. Fo Engip Shuyan unexpectedly encounters Tanam after a month-long search yielded no trace of her. Tanam arm in arm with Taken steps onto the red carpet. Upon seeing Kyo Yuyan Nu, Tanam can't help but scoff sneering. Kyo Yuyan Nu seizes opportunities, quite swiftly. Tukin softly reassures Tanam, saying, Don't worry, you have me here now. Tanam leans happily against his older brother's shoulder, saying, The one who should be afraid isn't me. Tukin and Tanam approach Fo Angip Shuyan and Kyo Yuyan Nu. Tukin shakes hands with Fo Angip Shuyan, saying, Mr. Fo, I've heard about you for a long time. Fo Angip Shuyan reciprocates the greeting. He can't take his eyes off Tanam thinking to himself, Tanam seems to have transformed into a different person, completely unlike before. After a whole month of not finding her, she's finally with Takan. What exactly is the relationship between them? Seeing Fo Angip Shuyan staring at Takan, Kyo Yuyan News internal alarm bells ring. She purses her lips and silently calculates, I won't let Angip Shuyan be swayed by this woman Tanam. Kyo Yuyan Nu quickly turns to Tanam with a mocking smile asking, What brings you here? Is this a place you're allowed to come to? Before Tanam could respond to Ken interjects asking Kyo Yuyan Nu, Do you happen to be the daughter of which big shot? Kyo Yuyan Nu smugly responds, Oh, perhaps you don't know yet. Tanam has just divorced Angip Shuyan, Kyo Yuyan Nu's response draws a chuckle from Takan. He turns to Kyo Yuyan Nu mocking her, is there a rule that says divorcees can't attend events? Isn't Mr. Fo here as well? Caught off guard, Kyo Yuyan News fake smile quickly fades. Tanam adds sarcastically, Do I need to report my whereabouts and companions to you, Kyo? You seem quite invested in this. The nearby journalists immediately turn their cameras towards Fo Angip Shuyan and Kyo Yuyan Nu. The buzzing conversations suggest that Kyo Yuyan Nu is the third party in the relationship. The murmurs continue to echo, and Kyo Yuyan Nu, feeling embarrassed, tries to cling to Fo Angip Shuyan, but he doesn't even bother to pay attention to her. Tukin said coldly, It seems that the atmosphere of the entire party has become more solemn due to the presence of Ms. Kyo. Mr. Fo still needs to elevate his standards in choosing a girlfriend. After Tukin finished speaking he and Tanam walked inside, ignoring the two of them completely. Kyo Yuyan Nu gritted her teeth, glaring at Tanam, feeling a burning rage within. Meanwhile, Fo Angip Shuyan remained lost in reminiscence. He thought to himself, it hasn't been long since the divorce, but Tanam seems to act as if she doesn't see me, and even leans her head affectionately towards someone else, the party proceeded as usual afterward. Feeling a bit tired, Tanam took a break and went up to the rooftop pool to cool off. Despite her effort to escape, Kyo Yuyan Nu followed her up here. Hearing Kyo Yuyan Nu calling her, Tanam coldly turned to look at her. 
Kyo Yuyan Nu stepped forward her face grim and asked to Nam, are you here just to get close to Angip Shuyan? The two of you are divorced, why are you still clinging to him like this? If I were you, I'd disappear instead of foolishly seeking trouble for myself like this, Tanam chuckled and asked her, Kyo Yuyan Nu, the whole world knows you're the third party. So, have you found happiness during this time? Kyo Yuyan Nu, with a thick face, retorted, status doesn't matter, feelings do. Angip Shuyan and I might end up together in the end, but can you? Did you sell your soul to get an invitation to this party? Your clothes and jewelry, are they all rented? What does a discarded rich wife like you rely on to attend high-class parties like this? Without waiting for Tanam's response, Kyo Yuyan Nu approached him closely wearing a face full of deceit as she said, you brought this upon yourself. Then, Kyo Yuyan Nu pivoted lightly on her heels and deliberately plunged into the pool right in front of Tanam. The splash of water startled the guests below, prompting them to clamor and ask. What's that sound? Soon after, there was a loud shout urging, someone fell into the water, quick, go help, it's in the pool on the other side, Tanam chuckled coldly as he watched Kyo Yuyan Nu's self-staged drama, raising an eyebrow as he remarked, this scene looks just like three years ago. Memories flooded back to Tanam of that time, which was the wedding party of Tanam and Foeng Gip Shuyan. Kyo Yuyan Nu had arranged to meet Tanam by the poolside where the wedding party was being held. She mocked Tanam, saying, I don't want to congratulate you, as the person Angip Shuyan loves isn't you. He married you so that you could donate blood to me any time. There will be no happiness for you two together. With those words, she flashed a sinister smile. Then, to the surprised and bewildered gaze of Tanam, Kyo Yuyan Nu plunged herself straight into the pool, she portrayed herself as pitiful as if the person who had just jumped was someone else, not her. She kept floundering, extending her hand and crying for help, save me, Angip Shuyan, save me. Seeing this scene, Fo Angip Shuyan dressed in a groom's suit rushed over. He shoved Tanam aside, disregarding everything, and dove straight into the pool. This humorous heroic act was witnessed clearly by Tanam in its entirety, not missing a single detail. At that moment, Tanam's heart began to break, only she hadn't turned away in that split second. Currently, Kyo Yuyan Nu is continuing her old melodramatic performance. Tanam looked at the scene in front of him and couldn't help but sneer because Fo Angip Shuyan was still the same as three years ago, still without hesitation jumping into the water to save Kyo Yuyan Nu. He even kept asking Kyo Yuyan Nu, Are you okay? Kyo Yuyan Nu leaned against Fo Angip Shuyan's chest crying saying, Angip Shuyan, don't blame Tanam. She didn't mean to push me down. I came to apologize to her, but she refused to forgive me. She must still be blaming me, Fo Angip Shuyan immediately glanced at Tanam. Tanam noticed the look from his ex-husband and couldn't help but chuckle. She raised her chin and asked, Fo Angip Shuyan, you've used this trick before and yet he still believes it? Tanam crossed his arms mockingly and replied, I can't believe Kyo's acting skills are still so outdated, no progress at all. Kyo Yuyan Nu stood up angrily, then pretended to be pitiful as she spoke to Tanam, I know you don't like me, but every time you donate blood, Angip Shuyan gives you money. What else could you possibly want? Why do you keep lingering after the divorce and continue to slander us? Attending this party with all your schemes, is it because you refuse to give up hope? the guests, upon hearing this, immediately began to buzz with chatter, saying, could it be that the ex-wife of the Ta family is not as rumored? Is she not an innocent woman? Fo Angip Shuyan frowned as he stood up, silently thinking that Kyo Yuyan Nu's words were too impolite. He could think of many things, but couldn't voice them out. On this side, as Kyo Yuyan Nu was attempting to edge closer to the water, she was abruptly pushed away by Tanam. Right under the gaze of the attending officials and guests, Tanam firmly slapped Kyo Yuyan Nu on the cheek. Before Tanam even had a chance to get angry, she grabbed Kyo Yuyan Nu by the shoulders, then spun her around directing her towards the pool, and smirked saying to her, the things I have never done, must be done to gain anything. Immediately after, Tanam coldly exerted force to push Kyo Yuyan Nu into the hotel pool. Kyo Yuyan Nu screamed in fear as she thrashed in the water, 
seeing Kyo Yuyan Nu struggling in the water, Tanam, satisfied, remarked, Now, I accept. Fo Angip Shuyan's expression became complex and continuously changing as he observed Tanam's demeanor. Seeing Kyo Yuyan Nu crawling to the edge of the pool, Tanam took a glass of wine from the receptionist, turned and said, That's right, Miss Kyo Yuyan Nu, wait a moment, don't rush. I have a gift for you. Tanam approached Kyo Yuyan Nu, poured the entire contents of the glass over her head and said, First of all, this glass of wine is a supplementary gift for you. After Tanam's actions, he coldly departed ignoring the ongoing chatter of the crowd, which criticized Kyo Yuyan Nu for her supposed bad behavior and self-direction. Once Kyo Yuyan Nu managed to climb out of the pool, she anxiously called out for Engip Shuyan. However, he didn't even spare her a glance. Kyo Yuyan Nu was enraged to the point of trembling, tears streaming down her face. She harbored deep hatred towards Tanam, feeling the pain to her very core silently thinking, wretched to Nam, ever since he appeared, he has stolen Angip Shuyan's attention, and now he's even taken away my spotlight, Fo Angip Shuyan furrowed his brows and asked Kyo Yuyan Nu, did you really just fall on your own earlier? Kyo Yuyan Nu In a panic, hastily defended herself, saying, of course not. How could I possibly frame to Nam? You saw it yourself, she seemed like she was crazed, wanting revenge on us. Kyo Yuyan Nu looking pitiful asked Fo Angip Shuyan, Do you really not believe me, Angip Shuyan? If you don't believe me, then do you also not believe Tren Hang? Fo Angip Shuyan sighed and said, Let me take you home first. However, Tanam was not willing to let things end so peacefully. She went to the balcony on the second floor. Under the cold gaze of the guests, Tanam coldly threw a pile of cash down, saying, Fo Angip Shuyan, this is the compensation for the times I donated blood for you over the past three years. Now, I return it all to you. We no longer owe each other anything, the Chinese Yuan flew wildly in the air, leaving Fo Angip Shuyan and Kyo Yuyan Nu stunned staring blankly at Tanam. The guests at the party erupted into chatter, saying, Oh my, isn't that something? Scatter money in front of everyone? Stop standing there, hurry up and pick up the money. Only Fo Angip Shuyan kept his gaze fixed on Tanam, while Kyo Yuyan Nu was filled with intense hatred. She quickly turned to Fo Angip Shuyan and said, Tanam is definitely going to be angry with us again, Angip Shuyan or should we leave? Despite this, Fo Angip Shuyan coldly pushed Kyo Yuyan Nu away. He turned and walked away saying, You wait by the door. Fo Angip Shuyan left Kyo Yuyan Nu waiting outside while he himself headed back to the party room. As he opened the door and entered, the scene of Tikin kneeling down to massage Tanam's feet struck Fo Angip Shuyan's eyes. Enraged, he called out Tanam's name. Tukin sat down beside Tanam, casually draping his arm around her shoulders, then asked Fo Angip Shuyan, Boss Fo, instead of consoling someone, you come up here to keep tabs on us? Seeing Tikin unreservedly placing his hand on to Nam's bare shoulder, Fo Angip Shuyan immediately felt a jealous and resentful frown crease his face, though he felt sympathy for Tanam. Fo Angip Shuyan's words came out as unacceptable remarks. He said to Tanam, If I did anything to make you uncomfortable, you can hold me accountable. Stop causing trouble for Yuyan Nu. Tanam crossed her arms and smirked, saying, I don't like that. Are you planning to throw me into the water, instead of her? Fo Angip Shuyan frowned and said, Out of respect for our three-year marriage, I advise you to live a virtuous life. Tanam seemed to find the situation amusing and said, So boss Fo doesn't understand me. I was born wicked like this, Fo Angip Shuyan was so angry that he bit his lip, thinking to himself that Tanam was truly stubborn. Frustrated, he turned and walked away saying, Do as you wish. Inside, Fo Angip Shuyan felt a chill. He had originally come here to explain his relationship with Kyo Yuyan Nu to Tanam, but it seemed unnecessary now. After Fo Angip Shuyan left the room, Tukin turned to Tanam and asked, Little sister, do you still like him? Tanam snorted coldly and replied, How could I? I won't make the same mistake again. After leaving the hotel, Fo Angip Shuyan drove Kyo Yuyan Nu home. In the car, she continued to plead and explain to Fo Angip Shuyan saying, Angip Shuyan, you really have to trust me. 
Fo Engip Shuyan remained cold and silent. When the car stopped at a red light, the driver suddenly said to them, Isn't that Miss Kyo and Miss Tu outside? The three of them looked up at the advertising board attached to the tallest skyscraper. The screen displayed footage from the surveillance camera at the hotel pool just moments ago. The time matched the moment when Kyo Yuyan Nu approached to Nam to cause trouble. The footage clearly showed Kyo Yuyan Nu intentionally jumping into the pool and then acting as if to Nam had pushed her in. Fo Eng Gip Shuyan's heart trembled as he witnessed this scene. He knew that this was to Nam's response to him. Fo Eng Gip Shuyan clenched his fists tightly, feeling utterly ridiculous. Despite that, he still went to confront Tanam and ask her to apologize to Kyo Yuyan Nu. Fo Engip Shuyan ordered the driver to stop the car immediately on the roadside. Kyo Yuyan Nu panicked and called out to Engip Shuyan, frantically shouting, Engip Shuyan, please listen to my explanation. Inside, he screamed inwardly wondering, who on earth inserted that surveillance footage into the advertisement video in the city center like this? Fo Engip Shuyan coldly told Kyo Yuyan Nu, Tomorrow morning, I will have someone take you back to France. Then he instructed the driver to take Kyo Yuyan Nu home. Kyo Yuyan Nu was stunned to hear this. She called out Fo Eng Gip Shuyan's name, but he paid no attention. The car continued to drive away. Fo Eng Gip Shuyan stared intently at the video on the advertising board, questioning himself if this time is wrong, then which time in the past three years was right? Just as Fo Eng Gip Shuyan was lost in thought, a Mercedes stopped beside him and the person inside kept honking. The person approaching was Luke Kai, a notorious playboy in the city of A who was also married. Luke Kai smiled and asked Fo Eng Gip Shuyan, Shuyan, what are you doing here alone? Get in the car. Fo Eng Gip Shuyan circled around to the passenger seat and got into Luke Kai's car. While driving, Luke Kai kept bombarding Fo Eng Gip Shuyan with questions asking, so, what's the relationship between Tanam and Takan and Taitan? Today, they seemed even closer than you and I were in the past. He continued to ramble on saying, Let me tell you, Shuyan, marrying someone like Tanam our circle would feel embarrassed for you. Today, she even targeted Yuyan Nu. It's fortunate that the two of you are divorced. Otherwise, she would have made trouble for the entire Fo family. It's better to be rid of her antics. Fo Engip Shuyan coldly interjected, All right, stop talking. Luke Kai sneered coldly thinking to himself, Let it go, better not bring trouble to Shuyan, because of that to Nam later. Luke Kai enthusiastically suggested, Let's go have a drink buddy. Fo Engip Shuyan, feeling weary, agreed as well, A few peaceful days went by like that. Tonight, to Nam and to Kend went to a luxurious restaurant in the city center to dine. To consent to Tanam, I've appointed Vu Lao as your secretary. Besides guiding you with a few things, you need to learn more to establish yourself firmly in the company, Tanam asked anxiously, isn't Vu Lao your right-hand man? Is it easy for you to lend him to me like this? To Ken smiled and replied, if not him, then let our father teach you, huh? Tanam stuck out her tongue in refusal. To Ken took a sip of tea and continued, in two days, it's the anniversary of the CU Loop Corporation. He has an important project in his hands. You can give it a try. Tanam smiled and said, Okay, I'll definitely make time for it. Tukin seemed a bit worried as he said, It's not that simple. Everyone is eyeing this juicy piece of fat. By then, you'll be left alone when he goes abroad for a meeting. But that guy is probably coming back soon. Tanam immediately perked up upon hearing this and said excitedly, he's coming back soon? Let me go pick him up, as the two of them were happily chatting. Someone suddenly called out Tanam's name. It was Kuk Tin and Fo Don Don, the mother and son duo, from the Fo family. Seeing Tanam, Fo Don Don angrily exclaimed, how dare you come here? Mrs. Fo also shouted loudly, where's the manager? Where's the manager? How can anyone enter your restaurant? The restaurant manager quickly approached to address the situation. Fo Don Don immediately pointed at Tanam and loudly demanded, Quickly kick her out for me. Her presence here will affect our dining experience. We are VIPs here. Fo Don Don was furious because Tanam had brought up the incident of her stealing jewelry, which had gone viral on Weibo. 
causing her to be ridiculed by her peers for the past month. The manager hesitantly looked at Takan, who casually nodded in agreement. The two Fo family members continued to raise their voices, with Fo Don Don gesturing to the manager and insisting, Don't you hear me? Kick them out for me. Mrs. Fo stood with her arms crossed, addressing Tanam, Don't you even know your place? How dare you come here? You, a woman who was kicked out of the Fo family, have no right to be here. Upon hearing these words, Tukin furrowed his brow and coldly said to the Fo family, Since when has the Fo family become so shameless? Your ability to twist facts is truly astonishing, forcing people to look twice. Mrs. Fo, feeling infuriated, and Fo Don Don shouted at the manager. Why are you still hesitating? I don't want to see them here. Don't you understand? The manager calmly retorted to Fo Don Don saying, Mrs. Fo, Miss Fo, Mr. Tu is the largest shareholder of our restaurant. If both of you don't want to see him, you are free to leave. His meaning was crystal clear, either stay and eat or leave without any fuss. Upon hearing this, the Fo family members were stunned and asked, what are you saying? Tanam couldn't help but smirk, taking a sip of her wine and mockingly said, manager, it's just a meal. Why make such a fuss? Fo Don Don coldly retorted to Tanam, consider yourself warned. No matter how high you climb, our Fo family won't care. I can make sure you can't move a finger in the city of A in no time, Tanam curiously exclaimed, oh, and asked Fo Don Don, so what do you want then? Fo Don Don, with a smug expression, pulled out a chair from the table and sat down, then smirked at Tanam saying, pour me a glass of wine and apologize, then I'll temporarily overlook this. After all, indulging others like this was quite common in your Fo family in the past, Tanam smiled and then stood up to pour wine into the glass. Tanam slowly approached Fo Don Don, who was eagerly waiting for Tanam to serve her. However to her surprise, Tanam unexpectedly poured the entire glass of wine over her head. Tanam looked into Fo Don Don's eyes with a warning, saying, Miss Fo, remember this well. I'm the one who initiated the divorce. I'm the one who doesn't need your Fo family. If you continue with your insolence, I will make sure you understand who truly can't move a finger in this city of A. After Tanam finished speaking, he left and behind him, Mrs. Fo was furious shouting, You wretched Tanam, have you gone mad? How dare you treat Don Don from our family like that? Where are your manners? Hurry up and come here to help. Tanam approached his elder brother and then frowned saying, The atmosphere here is too unpleasant. I want to dine somewhere else. Upon hearing this, Tukin indulgently replied, the manager has prepared another room for esteemed guests like us. Let's go over there. Tanam and Tukin walked away arm in arm, leaving behind the two Fo family members struggling as they were surrounded by mocking guests. Fo Don Don was furious, trembling with anger. She shouted, Tanam, I won't let you off the hook for this. One hour later, Fo Angip Shuyan drove to pick up the Fo family. Seeing Fo Angip Shuyan, Fo Don Don hurriedly ran over to complain saying, Finally, you're here. I was really embarrassed earlier. It's all because of that scoundrel Tanam, he's harmed me, and mom can attest to it. Just as they were talking, on the other side, Tanam and Tekin had also finished their meal and were preparing to leave. Tanam and Tekin completely ignored the Fo family. Fo Don Don, furious, said to Fo Angip Shuyan, it was Tanam who caused harm to me. Fo Angip Shuyan angry, grabbed Tanam's arm. He coldly asked, do you have anything to explain? In his heart, he thought Tanam wouldn't turn out to be this awful, last time it was Kyo Yuyan Nu who harmed her, perhaps this time it's also a misunderstanding. Despite thinking so, Fo Angip Shuyan's tone when questioning Tanam sounded extremely harsh. Tanam pushed Fo Angip Shuyan's hand away, furrowing his brow, and said, I have nothing to explain. Yes, I spilled wine on her. So what? Does boss Fo want his little sister to teach me a lesson? Fo Don Don shouted, don't let him off the hook, this scoundrel laid hands on me, he must pay for it. Fo Angip Shuyan turned back to look at Fo Don Don and asked, what do you want? Hearing this, Fo Don Don sneered coldly saying, at the very least, make Tanam kneel down and apologize to me. 
Tanam seemed to find it the joke of the century, and she asked Fo Angip Shuyan, make me kneel down and apologize? Is boss Fo also in favor of that? Tanam looked annoyed, gritting her teeth. In the past, every time Fo Don Don and Kuk Tin caused trouble, it was always her who had to step forward and apologize to resolve the situation. Big issues turned into small matters, and small matters were brushed off as if nothing had happened. Tanam didn't want to engage in the rotten habits of the Fo family anymore. She turned away, and before leaving she said to Fo Angip Shuyan. Boss Fo should check the security cameras to understand the cause of the incident beforehand. Yeah. Miss Fo isn't as innocent and naive as she pretends to be, putting on a show of innocence for what? Tukin also turned back to remind Fo Don Don, Miss Fo, when you bully others, you should be prepared to face the consequences. Earlier, Miss Fo also spoke recklessly. Shouldn't she apologize to Tanam as well? Fo Don Don quickly turned to explain to Fo Angip Shi in stuttering, Brother, I didn't do anything. Remember last time when she smeared me online, saying I stole a necklace me mong, and then I was mocked by the group of sisters? How could she accuse me of stealing something from my own house? I just said a couple of things to her, and she responded like that. Upon hearing this, Tanam turned back and glanced at Fo Angip Shuyan. She coldly snorted and said, being insulted without resistance. That was the old Tanam. Miss Fo should learn to respect others, or there will be another time. Tukin opened the door and escorted Tanam into the car. Before leaving, he reminded Fo Angip Shuyan that the restaurant's cameras were always available, and if Mr. Fo wanted to review them, he could do so anytime. Then they left, Fo Angip Shuyan frowned as she watched the direction where Tanam and Tukin had just left. Before their divorce, every conversation with him, Tanam had always been very cautious. But now she had truly changed a lot, making it unpredictable. Fo Don Don next to her started to make a fuss again saying, Tanam bullies me, which is actually bullying our Fo family. She forgets who has been dressing her for the past three years. It's truly disgraceful. Fo Angip Shuyan, infuriated, snapped at Fo Don Don, saying, enough. She furrowed her brow and asked her, the jewelry in the safe is meant for, Tanam. Why did you take it without permission? Fo Don Don feeling frustrated retorted, I'm your sister, why do you need to be so calculating with me over a little jewelry? Besides, Tanam never has a chance to wear expensive jewelry anyway, so why can't I take it? Fo Angip Shuyan, without many words said, now I will go check the security cameras. Fo Don Don, furious, exclaimed, don't you trust me? The man who's been so intimate with her, maybe she's been cheating on you for a long time and you don't even know. It's very possible that she's been using your money to support that little brat. Fo Angip Shuyan finally couldn't stand the words coming out of Fo Don Don's mouth anymore. He sternly told her, shut up. Seeing her brother's displeased expression, Fo Don Don immediately understood and kept her mouth shut, not daring to utter another word. Fo Angip Shuyan entered the restaurant, and the manager quickly provided him with the footage from the security cameras. Inside, Fo Don Don's ignorant behavior was evident as she continuously cursed at Tanam, even demanding the manager to kick him out of the restaurant. Fo Angip Shuyan paid attention to Tanam in the video who remained calm and silent throughout. He silently pondered on Tanam's composed demeanor. Could it be that they had always treated her like this? These were things he had never known. Fo Angip Shuyan furrowed his brows as he continued to watch, paying close attention to the expressions of each person. He thought to himself whether this was the first time Tanam had stood up against them. Thinking so, Fo Angip Shuyan coldly questioned Fo Don Don, this isn't the first time you've cursed at her, is it? Fo Don Don, taken aback, put on an innocent facade and said, What are you talking about? I was just angry because she immediately started dating someone else after divorcing, why would I curse at her normally? Fo Angip Shuyan enraged told Fo Don Don, Go apologize to Tanam. Fo Don Don feeling cornered exclaimed, I won't go. Clearly, Tanam spilled wine on me, why should I apologize? Instead of asking me to apologize to that jerk, why don't you ask me to find a way to end it all? Fo Don Don grasped Fo Angip Shuyan's hand, pleading desperately saying. You have to help me. 
Currently, Tanam is using your money to find men. The man next to her clearly has improper feelings. Before Fo Don Don could finish, Fo Eng Gip Shuyan coldly cut her off saying, that man is to can from Taitan, you can't touch him. Fo Eng Gip Shuyan's words sent shivers down Fo Don Don's spine, making her break out in a cold sweat. She never would have imagined that the man walking alongside Tanam earlier was the mysterious, eligible bachelor, Takan, known as the Diamond King. Countless women racked their brains to be chosen by him, yet Tanam was with him. Fodon Don felt consumed by jealousy and rage, biting her lip fiercely. Then, in a fit of anger, she dialed Luke Kai's number, saying heatedly, Tanam is bullying me, please come and help me quickly. On the following morning, at Tati Corporation, Tanam was in his office when he received a call from his assistant, informing him that Fo Don Don had secretly arranged for someone to take photos of Tanam. The assistant asked Tanam, Do you need me to handle this matter? Tanam replied, No need, let her take the photos. It's like giving me free publicity, helping me save a lot on advertising costs. Tukim brought coffee to Tanam and noticed his tense expression, so he couldn't help but inquire, What's wrong? Tanam smiled and replied, Fo Don Don is trying to secretly photograph me, but let her do it, it doesn't bother me. Tanam lifted the coffee cup and took a sip. His eyes immediately lit up like stars, and he exclaimed cheerfully like a child saying, Your brewed coffee is the best, even better than those master baristas around the world. If you ever open a coffee, you'd surely make a lot of money. Tukin smiled and replied, Apart from you, no one else can handle the coffee I brew. Tanam suddenly remembered something and smiled as he asked Tukan, Tomorrow, you will officially take office. Could you let Tandu take over as deputy for a few days? Tukan, of course, wouldn't refuse happily replying, It's up to you. Just arrange it. With the approval of his elder brother, Tanam quickly went to inform Tandu. Their steadfast companion, she texted Tandu saying, Everything's settled now. Tomorrow officially starts our work. Tandu replied eagerly, Yes, boss too, let's go to Thin Thuyat to celebrate. After finishing work, Tanam and Tandu actually went to Thin Thuyat Bar in the city center to celebrate. While Tanam and Tandu were feeling the beat amidst the pulsing music, someone discreetly slipped a pill into their drinks. After finishing their dance, Tandu returned to their seats, while Tanam needed to use the restroom, so she instructed Tandu to wait for her there. Tandu, unaware of anything, happily finished her drink. The man who had spiked the drinks earlier watched this scene with satisfaction, chuckling to himself. He quickly approached Tandu with a lecherous tone saying, Hey there, sweetheart, wanna have some fun with me? Tandu, panicked pushed the man away saying, Who are you? Get away from me, I don't know you. However, Tandu's weakened state, combined with the effects of the drug, made her head pound like a hammer and her body trembled with exhaustion. The man, emboldened by the situation, continued to approach Tan Du as Tan Du struggled, Tanam appeared from behind, ordering the man, stop right there, and coldly demanding. Let go of Tan Du seeing another attractive woman coming into the picture, the man chuckled smugly, telling Tanam, finish your drink on the table, and I'll release her. Tanam felt a chill in her heart, she didn't need to think twice to know that there was something wrong with the drink. Sensing the tension, another girl approached Tanam and warned her saying, Hey, don't go over there. Call the police, this guy is notorious for being a gang leader. Tanam gently reassured the girl smiling, Thank you, but don't worry. Tanam walked straight towards the man, raising her voice, Let her go, I'm here. Seeing Tanam approaching, the man laughed with a wide grin on his face. In her heart, Tanam thought tonight she would enjoy her good fortune to the fullest. As Tanam lifted her glass of wine, the man hastily pushed Tandu away. The girl from earlier quickly caught Tandu as he was about to grab Tanam, she abruptly grabbed the bottle of wine from the table and then slammed the bump onto the man's head. The bottle shattered, its shards flying everywhere. Tanam took advantage of the opportunity to twist the man's arm back. He cried out in pain, ow, 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 my joint is about to dislocate. After twisting the man's arm, Tanam disdainfully flung him away as if tossing out rubbish, silently musing that despite three years of inactivity, 
her arm muscles still functioned well. It was fortunate that she retained her knowledge, enabling her to still employ a few techniques. This remarkable scene quickly drew the attention of the people in the bar, and everyone began buzzing with excitement saying, how could a tall guy like that be subdued by a beautiful girl in the blink of an eye? After intervening, Tanam picked up a glass of wine from the table and then held it in front of the man, smirking as he asked, Do you want to drink it yourself, or should I help you? The man, trembling with fear, quickly responded, I was wrong. Please forgive me. Tanam, despite being generous and forgiving, poured the wine into the man's mouth saying, Let me help you. After serving the wine to the man, he coughed uncontrollably. Tanam stood up, wiping his hands, feeling uncomfortable as he said, encountering such destructive people today really ruins the mood. After resolving everything, Tanam quickly found her best friend, Tandu, and thanked the girl who had helped Tandu earlier. The girl smiled and said, It's nothing. As long as you're all okay, that's all that matters, Tanam quickly escorted Tandu, who had been drugged out of the thin Thuya bar. Onlookers watched in admiration, commenting, she's amazing. We thought she was vulnerable. But she's actually a queen, and in the bar, aside from the curious onlookers, there was also a sleuth sent by Fo Don Don, grinning coldly as he stretched his camera out to capture some sensational scenes. After obtaining the crucial photos, the paparazzo called Luke Kai saying, Boss Luke, I've managed to snap a few pictures of Tanam getting physical with someone at the bar. If we post these online, it'll surely tarnish her reputation. Hearing the intelligence, Luke Kai was pleased and instructed the paparazzo, go ahead and publish those photos online. It turned out that the paparazzo was sent by Luke Kai to vent his anger on behalf of Fo Don Don. He smirked as he looked at the images sent to his phone. Silently musing, not even a day has passed and Tanam has already shown her true colors. Just leaving the Faux household, she's abandoned gratitude and loyalty, bullied Don Don, betrayed Angip Shuyan. She needs to be taught a lesson. The next morning, at the Ta family mansion, Tanam woke up to find Tan Du bursting into the room in anger saying, Tanam, they're cursing you on the internet. Tanam, bewildered, asked, cursing me? Why would they curse me? Tandu held up her phone to Tanam, saying, They took the video from last night of you fighting and edited it with malicious intent to pave the way for online violence against you. Tanam now could clearly see the content of the top trending topic on Weibo, which was the video of her fighting the man at the Thin Thuyet bar the previous night. Netizens were accusing Tanam of going to the bar to party and then fighting someone, saying Tanam was a rich man's ex wife who hadn't been flipped over long enough to become a clown. And also saying, it's fortunate that Fo Angip Shuyan divorced Tanam. It was all one sided and unpleasant remarks. Tanam gently said to Tandu, It's okay. If we don't look at it anymore, we won't get upset. Let's quickly get ready for work. Tandu was surprised by Tanam's calm reaction. Although Tanam didn't mind, Tandu felt differently. She couldn't let such words continue to exist on the internet. It was all because of her that Tanam was being criticized, and everything turned out like this. She had to handle it herself to make it right, Tanam and Tan do left the mansion, and the butler informed them, the driver is waiting for both of you outside. Tanam declined saying, I will drive myself to work. The reason Tanam wanted to drive herself to the company was that the Rolls Royce being driven by the chauffeur was too conspicuous. The butler immediately fetched a bunch of keys of various types, excitedly saying, Mr. Tu has chosen the latest models of Maserati and Porsche. They are all kept in your garage. Some Lamborghini and Ferrari models ordered from overseas haven't arrived yet, so for now, you can use whatever is available. Tanam and Tandu were threatened with cold sweats and waves, Tanam hesitated saying, I just want to go to work like a normal person, so I can't be too ostentatious. Even Tandu beside her had nothing more to say, silently thinking, Uncle Tu really loves Tanam endlessly, a car worth tens of millions, and he says it's just for temporary use? Tanam hurriedly pulled Tandu out of the mansion. She told the butler, I don't need those, I'll go with Tandu, the butler smiled, entrusting his precious young lady to Tandu. Who responded cheerfully? Tanam and Tandu arrived at the Tati Corporation skyscraper to work. 
Today was the day when Tanong would officially assume her position. During the board of directors meeting, Tukin introduced Tanong to the group, saying, Today, Tanong will take on the role of CEO of our company. I hope everyone will cooperate fully with the work of our CEO. All the people below applauded enthusiastically, except for one person who looked disdainful, and that was Lam Swang. Seeing Tanong promoted to CEO made Lam Swang envy her to the point of anger, Lam Swang silently thought to herself, what is Tanong's background after all? Apart from finding out she's the ex-wife of Fo Ang Gip Shuyan, her family background seems to be nothing special. I've worked diligently for so many years. This position should rightfully be mine, so why is it given to her? Fueled by envy to the point of madness, Lam Swang decided to raise her hand to express her opinion. She stood up, her face twisted with disdain, and said, May I ask, does Miss to have any qualifications? Can someone who has been a wealthy daughter-in-law for three years handle this job? I disagree, I refuse to work in the same company as someone like you, Miss Tu. Without waiting for Tanam to respond, Tukin spoke up in response to Lam Swang, If you disagree, you can submit your resignation letter. I will approve it. Lam Swang, caught off guard by Tukin's straightforward response, immediately felt embarrassed and flushed. She silently reflected on her years of hard work at the company, which had led to her current position. Yet Tukin's swift action in favor of a newcomer felt like a direct slap in her face. Tanam, realizing the complexity of the situation and acknowledging the recent public criticism directed at him, felt it would be best to step back and not escalate matters further. He was about to speak up in support of Lam Swang when she interrupted him, apologizing and expressing her respect for the company's decision. Lam Swang's sudden change of attitude was faster than flipping a rice paper sheet. Tukin paid no attention to her. After everything smoothed over, he allowed the meeting to adjourn. The crowd stood up, with only Lam Swang staring at Tanam, harboring resentment in her heart. Today, she had made herself look foolish in front of everyone, all because of this incomprehensible, Tanam. She vowed to remember him well, upon leaving the meeting to return to the office, Tanam encountered her close friend Tan Du, who appeared excited. Tan Du exclaimed, I'm here to share some news. Seeing Tanam's puzzled expression, Tandu pushed her phone towards her and said, Take your time and enjoy this. On the phone screen was the unedited video footage captured at Thin Thuyat Bar. Last night, Tandu had asked an account to post it on Weibo, along with a caption, Whoever says Tanam is violent should watch this entire video. The real villain here is the one who initiated the violence, trying to take my friend, Tanam, away. Then he even harassed Tanam. Beating him up was totally justified, the online community immediately changed their stance. Instead of hurling insults, they now praised Tanam, calling her, the goddess Tanam, the beautiful and aloof Tanam, the incredibly cool Tanam, and so on. Touched, Tanam asked Tandu, did you deliberately retrieve that video from last night? Tandu proudly replied. Just a phone call away. Then, Tan Du, annoyed, said, I won't allow anyone to tarnish your reputation, especially right in front of me. Tanam gently rubbed Tan Du's head to calm her down saying, All right, all right, there's really nothing to worry about. No matter what, it's not that big of a deal. Tan Du pushed her hand away and asked Tanam, Do you know who is behind this plan? Tanam shook her head in bewilderment saying, I have no idea. Tandu said coldly, it's none other than Fo Angip Shuyan's good friend, Luke Kentucky, hearing the name Luke Kai made Tanam shudder, she furrowed her brows and muttered, indeed, it's not much different from what I expected. Regardless of whether it was Fo Don Don or Luke Kai. They both had connections to her ex-husband, Fo Angip Shuyan. Tanam said coldly to Tandu, if Luke Kai has taken the initiative to come knocking on the door, then I have to respond properly. Hearing this, Tandu enthusiastically tapped away on her phone, saying, I've already prepared something for you, just send it over there. Tanam opened her phone to see what Tandu had sent, and it was a scandalous photo of Luke Kentucky. In the picture, he was holding one woman with his left hand and another with his right. The photo was taken shortly after Luke Kai got married. Tanam chuckled coldly, then promptly posted the picture on her Weibo account. 
She even tagged Luke Kai and wrote explicitly, If you want to deal with me, come face me. At least my moves are more open than yours. I don't need to hire someone to secretly film and edit footage. I hope you can handle this properly, Luke. After hitting post, Tanam excitedly shook his phone and said to Tan Du, Let's just wait and see the show. At the same time, at Fo T Corporation, Luke Kai was indeed in a state of panic. He went to seek help from Fo Angip Shuyan, saying, Shuyan, your ex wife wants to ruin me, it's outrageous. Despite her actions, she's inciting online violence against me. This is her true face. Now, my wife is causing a scene at home, demanding a divorce. Please help me out. Fo Angip Shuyan snatched Luke Kai's phone quickly skimmed through the content, then furrowed his brows and asked, so you plotted against her first and got hit back? Luke Kai, caught off guard, stammered as he explained, I just wanted to teach her a lesson. Besides, I didn't even know if that video had been edited. Those paparazzi want to ruin me for money. Fo Angip Shuyan casually remarked, serve you right, then proceeded to ignore Luke Kai, focusing back on his documents. Frustrated, Luke Kai yelled out, wasn't it all because of Don Don? She asked me to take revenge for her. Luke Kai's words made Fo Angip Shuyan furrow his brows. He couldn't believe Don Don would harbor such deep seated grudges and cause trouble. Luke Kai, now in disarray, continuously sobbed, saying, My wife wants to divorce me because of this. Fo Angip Shuyan raised an eyebrow and replied, Luke Kai, you brought this upon yourself. My advice to you is if you poke someone, be prepared to face the consequences. Hearing this, Luke Kai retorted with wounded pride, Why did you ask me to find Tanam then? Why should I bow down to that deceitful woman? Just then, the secretary arrived to announce that it was time for the meeting. Fo Angip Shuyan stood up, patting Luke Kai's shoulder in consolation, saying, That's the best you can do. Luke Kai pondered for a while. If Tanam dared to publicly accuse him, he must have other evidence in hand. Despite his seething anger, Luke Kai had no choice but to negotiate with Tanam. If he didn't, he feared his wife would kick him out of the house tonight. The fear of his wife finally prompted Luke Kai to make the call to the company's public relations department, reluctantly instructing them to use his Weibo account to post an apology to Tanam. In less than an hour, Luke Kai's Weibo posted a clarification, stating, I had no knowledge of the edited and manipulated video. I apologize for the trouble caused to Ms. Tanam. Upon reading the announcement, Tandu reacted with disdain. Saying, Io, couldn't even endure for two hours. I thought this guy was made of tougher stuff? Didn't expect him to be so useless. Right at that moment, Lam Swan knocked on Tanam's office door and asked, Is it convenient for you to talk, Ms. Tu? Tanam nonchalantly motioned for her to come in. Seeing Tan Du by her side, Lam Swan hesitated and said, I have a few words I'd like to speak privately with Ms. Tu. Tan Du, looking stern, asked, Is there something that I can't hear? Seeing Tan Du's stern demeanor, Lam Swan refrained from saying much. She smiled warmly at Tanam and said, I'm here to apologize to you for my emotional outburst during the morning meeting. By the way, I also came to help you get acquainted with the work. Fong Hang has a project that is seeking collaboration. Negotiating this project should be enough to secure a solid position for you in the company. Lam Swang then pushed the document folder toward Tanam. Tanam silently thought, this morning she targeted me, and now she's sending a project my way. There must be something fishy inside. Despite these thoughts, Tanam nodded outwardly and said, I'll consider it further. Then, Tanam smiled and said to Lam Swang, Please refer to me as deputy manager too. This statement made Lam Swang stiffen, harboring deep resentment toward Tanam. She silently thought, Tanam is relying on being praised by the manager to act so arrogantly towards me. That was all Lam Swang dared to think. She forced a smile and said, I'm also doing this for your own good. The opportunity is given to you, but whether you can seize it or not depends on yourself. Lam Swang then uttered a humph and left the room, Tandu could hardly bear to look at Lam Swang's arrogant demeanor. She angrily remarked, is this the way she talks to her superiors? Tanam calmly replied, she believes that if it weren't for me, this position would be hers. 
Tanam glanced briefly at the stack of documents and said. I can confirm that this is just a wolf in sheep's clothing, there's nothing good here. Tanam turned to Tan Du and asked, I remember the vice president at Fong Heng was pursuing you, right? Tan Du chuckled mischievously and replied, Don't worry, I'll investigate thoroughly for you. Then, Tan Du suddenly remembered something and exclaimed excitedly, When you were still married, we used to frequently criticize Fo Eng Gip Shuyan in a small group chat. We didn't want to upset you, so we didn't include you. But now that you're divorced, let me add you to the group chat. After that, Tan Du added to Nam to the group named Congratulations to Nam on the divorce, which consisted of five members. They all sent messages congratulating her on divorcing Fo Eng Gip Shuyan and mentioned gathering at Thin Thuy at Bar tonight to celebrate. They emphasized that not attending was not an option, long time no see, to Nam felt the warmth of gathering with close friends like this. She quickly messaged the group, saying, I will definitely come, as evening fell quickly, to Nam and Tan Du arrived at Thin Thuy at Bar as planned. Unexpectedly, as soon as they got out of the car, they encountered their adversaries, Fo Eng Gip Shuyan and Luke Kentucky. Tanam was naturally taken aback to meet her ex-husband here. Tan Du just felt like she had encountered a stroke of bad luck having to face Luke Kai and Fo Eng Gip Shuyan. Tan Du sarcastically remarked to Luke Kai, Has Mr. Luke finished cleaning up the fire mess in the backyard of your house? Still in the mood to come here and drink, it seems like the influence of that photo is really insignificant, isn't it? Luke Kai, angered, crossed his arms and replied, I underestimated Ms. too. The current her is completely different from before. I didn't expect such a significant difference in her support. Upon hearing this, Tandu chuckled and said, What else is there? Three years ago, relying on that cowardly husband, after divorce, of course, she has to rely on friends. Isn't it true that you, Luke Kai, always go looking for friends whenever something happens? Luke Kai was provoked by Tan Du's words. But Tan Du didn't care about him. She turned and pulled Tanam into the bar, Fo Eng Gip Shuyan watched Tanam, wondering why she was here. But now, it seemed like the perfect time. This time, he must clarify all the misunderstandings from before. Inside the bar, after gathering together, Tanam's group of friends raised their glasses to toast her divorce. Trin Wai, the second young master of the Trin family, was one of Tanam's closest friends. He raised his glass, cheerfully saying, Welcome back, my dear queen. Nin Chi, the founder of the renowned international brand Says and also a close friend of Tanam, smiled and said to her, In a few days, I've arranged a grand farewell show. Remember to bring your dad along, I'll arrange good seats for him. Trin Wai also enthusiastically added, Today, I've invited the Fong Tu band that you love, to Nam, feeling genuinely cared for by her friends after a long time, smiled brightly and said, Thank you, my friends. While to Nam's group was happily gathering, they were interrupted by Luke Kai and Fo Eng Gip Shuyan. Luke Kai approached Trin Wai and greeted, Are you the two Trins? Quite a coincidence, isn't it? Trin Wai politely replied, Hello, Luke. Indeed, it's quite a coincidence. Luke Kai smiled and said, Let's hang out together, what do you say, two trends? Trin Wai turned to ask Tanam, My queen, do you mind this? Tanam placed an empty glass on the table and coldly stated, It's up to you. I'm going to watch the band. Tanam then left with Tan Du and Nin Chi to the hall, where the Fong Tu band was performing. Tan Du sighed and said, Let's go, this place is full of negative energy. Some people here have the kind of soul that just won't dissipate, Luke Kai engaged in cheerful conversation with Trin Wai, while Fo Eng Gip Shuyan couldn't take his eyes off Tanam. He immediately sat down and asked Trin Wai, what's the relationship between Tanam and you? Trin Wai. Trin Wai calmly replied, we're just friends. Luke Kai smirked sarcastically and said, can someone like Tanam really become friends with you, Trin Wai? Or perhaps you've been deceived by her? Fo Eng Gip Shuyan intervened to caution Luke Kai, while Trin Wai simply chuckled. He turned to Luke Kai and asked, Do you even understand what kind of person she is? Caught off guard by the unexpected question, Luke Kai hesitated and didn't know how to respond. 
With Fo Eng Gip Shuyan staring at him intently, Luke Kai felt reluctant to speak about Tanam's past over the last three years, even to Trin Wai. At that moment, a loud cheer echoed through the room announcing, Hello everyone, we are the Fong Tu Band. This special sound caught the attention of both Luke Kai and Fo Eng Gip Shuyan, who quickly turned to look towards the stage. The scene there was extremely familiar to them because they were legends themselves as the Fong Tu Band, a one-of-a-kind band. However, the Fong Tu Band was originally comprised of three members, yet now there were only two. Suddenly, Nin Chi brought a violin to Tanam and said, Lao Ma, the leader of the Fong Tu Band, couldn't make it due to an emergency surgery. Without the violin, the soul of our final performance would be missing. Tanam, it's your turn. Tanam hesitated for a moment, gently stroking the violin. It had been a long time, over three years, since she had played this instrument. Nin Chi understood her friend's lingering affection and smiled. Saying, only you have ever collaborated with the Fong Tu Band, and they are here because of you. Don't you want to rediscover the passionate and vibrant feeling from before? Hearing Nin Chi's words lifted Tanam's spirits visibly, and she took hold of the violin, agreeing with Nin Chi, saying, I'll go up, on Fo Eng Gip Shuyan's side, after seeing the Fong Tu band, Luke Kai exclaimed, isn't this band supposed to be in hiding? Why are they here? I heard they were invited to kick off some event, even offered a hefty sum, but they declined. How come they're here at this bar? As he saw the person holding the violin stepping onto the stage, Luke Kai froze, saying, that person looks familiar. Fo Eng Gip Shuyan, after taking a closer look, couldn't help but be shocked because the person standing on stage with the Fong Tu band, seemingly like a goddess lost in music. Playing the violin was none other than his ex-wife, Tanam. Fo Eng Gip Shuyan was stunned. He had no idea that Tanam could still play the violin. After the performance, Tanam turned to chat with her bandmate, her close elder brother figure. She breathed a sigh of relief and said, Luckily, I haven't forgotten the basic skills, so the performance can be considered satisfactory. Lao Dao, the drummer of the Fong Tu band, happily patted Tanam on the shoulder and said, Today was really fun. You were the one who arranged this music, so, except for Lao Ma, only you could coordinate with us so perfectly. Tandu also prepared a bouquet of fresh flowers to give to Tanam, and she proudly exclaimed, Well done, Tanam, you're truly my goddess. You have no idea how excited everyone in the audience was praising your violin playing skills. Lao Dao also smiled and said, Tanam's little sister, it seems like I've seen the you from three years ago. These words made Tanam blush, but then she happily smiled, feeling immersed in this moment of happiness. Tanam silently thought that she had actually gained countless wonderful things in the past three years. But luckily, it wasn't too late for her to turn things around now. Tanam turned to Tan Du and said, let's go back to our seats. I'm sure Fo Eng Gip Shuyan's group has already left. However, to the disappointment of Tanam and Tan Du, the stubborn duo of Fo Eng Gip Shuyan and Luke Kai were still lingering there. Tanam and Tan Du thought that they must have left by now but to their dismay, they were still shamelessly sitting there. Both girls displayed their frustration, clearly on their faces. Luke Kai retorted, I didn't expect Tanam to know how to play the violin. Why haven't we heard about this before? Tandu coldly responded, Why should we tell you? Who are you to need to know? Luke Kai, rebuffed, didn't dare to ask anything further, just suggesting they continue playing dice. Tan Du, of course, wanted no part in their company, so she bluntly said, Who wants to play with you guys? Tan Du's words silenced the room in an eerie silence. Fo Eng Gip Shuyan continued to gaze intently at his ex wife, Tanam, who looked radiant and resplendent. Her shining presence made Fo Eng Gip Shuyan restless and uneasy. Despite being his former wife, she appeared as if he had never seen her in this light before. Fo Eng Gip Shuyan placed his hand firmly on the empty glass on the table, staring directly into Tanam's eyes as he asked, Tanam, dare to play around with me? Tanam, unexpectedly invited by her ex-husband, smirked and replied, What would I be afraid of? Tandu intervened, cautioning, Why play with him? He's using psychological tactics, Nin Chi reassured Tandu, saying, Chu Du, don't worry, Tanam knows what she's doing. 
Meanwhile, Luke Kai chuckled as he looked at Tanam, secretly thinking that Fo Angip Shuyan was the most skilled in this situation, and Tanam was bound to lose. Tanam feeling confident, asked Fo Angip Shuyan, what do you want to bet on? Fo Angip Shuyan replied, it's up to you to decide. While Fo Angip Shuyan seemed to be fine with that, Luke Kai beside him wasn't necessarily as straightforward. He eagerly added, if Fo loses, I'll strip naked and walk out. But if Tanam loses, it means she admits in front of everyone that she married into the Fo family for money. Moreover, she won't be allowed to appear in City A anymore. Tanam, unfazed by Luke Kai's taunts, chuckled lightly and calmly replied, Okay, I agree. Fo Angip Shuyan pushed the dice forward, saying, Priority to women. Tanam didn't hesitate either, if he invited her. Then she would go first. Tanam flipped the cup over the four dice, then swiftly shook them several times. Quickly, she stopped and leisurely said to Fo Angip Shuyan, It's your turn now. Fo Angip Shuyan frowned in annoyance. He had been observing Tanam's demeanor since the beginning, and he could tell that she didn't seem to care much about the outcome of the bet. Was Tanam not interested in winning or losing? Fo Angip Shuyan began his turn. Meanwhile, Luke Kai smirked beside him, silently thinking that Tanam's actions weren't professional at all. How could she expect to win with such amateurish moves? Fo Angip Shuyan closed his eyes to roll the dice, confidently. In the past, he had been to the casinos in Macau, where he was the first to win a pile of gold coins. To Luke Kai, it seemed like Tanam was bound to lose. After Fo Angip Shuyan finished shaking the dice, he opened the cup to reveal that all six sides showed six dots. Luke Kai burst out laughing, saying, This level of skill from Mr. Shuyan is just average, as he patted Fo Angip Shuyan's shoulder, teasing, Are you still worried that he might soften up? Only Trin Wai chuckled lightly, and she calmly remarked to Luke Kai, Luke, you're quite the joker. Fo has never softened towards our Tanam, consider us well aware of Mr. Fo's determination. Luke Kai sneered, mocking, don't say those sweet words anymore. Trying to play dirty? Show us, Tanam's triumphant face. I'm afraid she might lose and be humiliated, Tandu heard this and became furious. Shouting, Luke Kai, do you have a dog's mouth that can't release an elephant's tusk? If you have nothing good to say, then shut your mouth. However, the main character, Tanam, showed no signs of concern, she even smirked. Tanam casually extended her hand and pushed the cup forward. After seeing the dice inside, the entire crowd was stunned, especially Luke Kai, who exclaimed in disbelief, This is impossible. Indeed, all the dice inside Tanam's cup showed six dots each, and one die was even split in half, resulting in Tanam having one more than Fo Angip Shuyan. Tanam glanced at Luke Kai and then stood up calmly, saying, I'll go say hello for a bit and then leave. Carry on, everyone. Fo Angip Shuyan stared at Tanam intently, feeling relieved for some reason, unable to understand why he felt lucky that Tanam won. Meanwhile, Luke Kai was on the verge of losing his mind. Tan Du, not intending to let him off the hook easily, approached Luke Kai and slammed her hand on the table, assertively saying, Luke, don't forget to strip down. This is what you said, so don't try to avoid it. Luke Kai exclaimed, you guys play dirty. Tandu scoffed, playing dirty? Saying others play dirty after losing? If you can't handle it, don't play. Mr. Fo, what do you say? Fo Angip Shuyan's direct callout took Luke Kai by surprise. Luke Kai looked at him with pleading, innocent eyes, hoping Fo Angip Shuyan would come to his rescue. However, Fo Angip Shuyan poured cold water on Luke Kai's head saying, losing is losing, then abruptly left, stating, I have things to attend to. This left Luke Kai behind, whimpering, what kind of good brothers are you? After Fo Angip Shuyan left, Trin Wai and Nin Chi were also ready to deal with Luke Kai and his foul mouth. 